Hey guys, so my friend and I, we probably will split it 50-50. We went to go see the Deerbrook. We actually had a store in the Deerbrook Mall. This was back in 2018 to 2020, right before COVID. And then we did a discounted six months during COVID. Uh, and we decided, you know what, they were not going to do a physical game store during COVID. Yeah, we uh, went to meet uh, the real estate agent or the renters or the leasers and they gave us a pretty good deal because we did have a store previously that did really well in the mall. And things that I want to do is I always want to see like what the economy around other game stores are. Here you have a game store that is 20 plus years old. Let me read you exactly how old it is. After 21 amazing years of serving the gaming community, we are packing up our games, closing our store, and moving on to new adventures. Don't be sad. Most new businesses don't make it past five years, let alone 22. So we are very proud, and we have our dedicated staff and customers to thank. We plan on closing our doors on July 31st, 2024. Starting June 1st, we will be liquidating our inventory in stages, drop by often to see what treasures, and so on. So this is the store. It is obviously, it's got Magic the Gathering. You can see the little things in the middle. Uh, it looks like people play board games as well as Magic the Gathering. The problem seems to be that their landlord sold the building to someone else, and that someone else wants to remodel. And that's the key. The key is, is your rent. If your rent is low enough, you can operate on very, very tiny margins. But as soon as your rent goes up or you get kicked out, which seems to be the case here, then there's not much you can do, right? I mean, it's, you don't, there's another uh, closing. Uh, this one was updated June 20th. It was posted June 18th. Um, I'm going to read you what it says i regret regretfully have to inform you for various reasons some of which are out of my control the great lakes gaming will be closing its doors at birchwood mall on july 28th so one of them is closing july 31st the other one's closing july 28th and they mention that there uh, they this one does friday night magic there was another one oh, called Dragon's Den, a card shop which had opened in downtown Port Huron, abruptly closed with no warning or explanation to their customers. In Houston, we had two stores close, uh, just kind of out of the blue. Uh, they were called Lotus Gaming. And if you remember Lotus Gaming, you might remember from my other TCG con, uh, Lotus Gaming was in Harris County, on El Camarino Real. It still has 71 really good reviews. I don't really know what happened. Uh, they were doing a lot of really, really good events. And then suddenly uh, they closed. So Lotus Gaming, I actually did try to buy the store. I made the attempt, I talked to the owner who was a woman and she was in Colorado, a lot of weirder things. I thought they were running a pretty good store don't really know what happened, but they closed uh, and they were relatively, they were doing well. They were doing social media a lot. Their whole brand was on social media, which I appreciate because I own a marketing agency, but they too closed. They too closed. So it's not easy running a game store. It is very difficult to run a game store. I'm looking at, yeah, they have plenty of game room. They have players. When you open a game store, and in fact, we found we had to go, we went to a bunch of them for my girlfriend's nephew, and some of them are the ones that we went to. So we went to all of them in Houston. Uh, we went to all of them in the east, what, north, north, northeast, east, and west, and humble. So he's actually taking an Uber to visit me at my home, and we went to all these stores around me. Uh, he got some cool Weiss play masks to take back to uh, his home. But my gosh, these game stars are not doing well. 
I'm not going to name names because whenever I name names, you know, then people get their butt hurt, right? This online is just kicking their money effing ass. And as more people become collectors, they can just do a convention instead. They don't need to do so. Like, let's look at the reason uh, why that this store closed. So the main reason for closing was the slower economy and having to be there seven days a week and not the best hours is what hurts us the most, Wu Men said. Uh, they primarily sold cards for games like Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh, the Pokemon card game, and Disney Locana, as well as video games. The store not only provided a place to buy cards, but also hosted game nights such as Friday Night Magic, allowing players in the community to meet up and play. So if you are a player in the community and you don't support your local game store, I, I can't tell you this, it won't be there. Next time you go to it, like it, it just won't be there. It is harder and harder to run these things uh, because everything is so damn expensive. But your customer base isn't really, they're looking for deals. And you can't really offer them the type of deals that they want, right? It's That's the Amazon's. I, mean, I am, the when Amazon, uh, Amazon's having its uh, Amazon sale, and I'm a big proponent of that as well. I actually have that Liliana poster in the back, just FYI. I have that Liliana as a beautiful cling wall. I still have it because um, I own a game store. I also have a giant calendar that must be like 200 pounds. I don't know why they made it so heavy, but it's magnetic. I actually still use that today for my office, my marketing agency. So a lot of the stuff that like they have, I have. I have the Aldrazi poster. It's just really cool stuff that I still have from my old game store. And and one aspect I really love opening the game store, but another aspect, and you know, you miss it when you don't have it, and when you have it, you hate it. That's the best way I can explain owning a game store. It's a bizarre, bizarre experience. Uh, it's bizarre because. You always think that like, hey, this is the time and uh, we can kind of wrap this up and it won't be bad. We'll go we'll go to the moon, right? We'll go to the moon. And it, ne it never is. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's never that way. It's always a very difficult experience to exist, especially if you're offering play space. Play space, you know, it, it's hard to really understand like how that can make money. I get it. Oh, people can drink and people can eat and people, but those get your store dirty. And there's like, if you have a store and you have, for me, anime figures or even video games and so on, you, you probably don't want people with Cheeto fingers touching like your comics or whatever you have in your store or even your cards for say. Um, yeah, it's sad to see game stores. Uh, they're all small business, mom and pop shops. It's really sad to see them go belly under. And but unfortunately, I think it's just really it's tough for them to exist in our online society. And as more people play casual, you know, I play EDH once a month with my girlfriend and two of our other friends, and that's about it. Uh, we have a good time, but we don't go outside to play anymore. And that's crazy. Like I used to play Magic. Every Friday, every Saturday at my local game store. The one, not the one I own, the one that like I first went to, DNA Comics. Pre-release, I would do five pre-releases every time there was a pre-release. And uh, when I was in law school, I would play a lot too, uh, around the same schedule, just to pour out your store. It's sad to see. Anyway, hi guys. <laughs>